All right. Hi, Cheryl. Hey. Nice to have you join. Thank you so much. Um, it's it's great to see you, and um, I appreciate your spending some time. Um, I realize we, we've never met in person, so so actually talking this way seems totally okay, um, but um, it's really great. And so tell me, uh, or you know, can you can you introduce yourself, where where you are, and what you're doing? Your name, your full name. I didn't even introduce you. Yeah, that's fine. Do you want to know what I'm currently doing? Is that what you're? Are you? Uh, how yeah, your work. Your work. Okay. I what mean, am I doing? Okay. Yeah. So I am Cheryl Imatune, and I am a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Nebraska in, in Lincoln. And um, what I am currently working on is, uh, and I'm in chemical engineering. And so chemical engineering is one of those fields that is very diverse. There's all kinds of things that go on in chemical engineering from, uh, you know, I have a son-in-law that's making plastic from natural gas and chemical engineering. So, but I am on the other end of that where um, I am exploring the engineering of a bacteria that you find naturally in the soil uh, that's closely related to bacteria you find in like the nodules of soybeans. You know how soybeans can fix nitrogen. They take nitrogen out of the air and they make it available to the plant and it helps the plant grow. So you, know, you can put less fertilizer on the soil um, and then less runs off into the water and all of the environmental problems associated with it. So understanding that relationship has always been really, really tough. Nobody's ever been able to pull it no set of people, not one person even, even uh, but when no set of people can even pull that apart. So what I'm doing is asking, can I take this bacteria that lives in the soil, but doesn't live in root nodules, but is very closely related to bacteria that live in root nodules. And can I add in what it needs to make it be what they call a symbiont mm -hmm. and actually live in the root nodules? It's so, so cool. So, it seems yeah. like you should, right? Like it's it's just speeding up some evolution. You're, you're yeah. directing the evolution towards that path. That's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You're just looking at the difference between the two. What's different? Okay. Um, what can I add in to the one and and you know, yeah. get the other. Yeah. So so your work, do you do a lot of compu like like computer sequence comparison, like bioinformatics things, or is it mostly experimental, like shotgun of genes into from one to the other? It's it's using what other people's bioinformatics. So, you know, uh, we're very fortunate that all this information is available online. And um, there's been people that have done comparisons of other similar bacteria. So yeah, you just do a little bioinformatics, not much, uh, to compare the, the nitrogen fixing bacterium to the non-nitrogen and what are the differences. And so um, on, the, on, on the function level, basically. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but then everything else is experimental. Yeah. Lots of pipetting. Lots of pipetting, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And are you in the lab these days or has your lab, uh, yeah? Yes, so um, starting about Memorial Day, we were able to get back in. So they shut down very beginning of the April until basically the end of May. Uh, we have uh, protocols in place where uh, only so many people can be in the lab, of course, masked. Um, and we maintain our, our distance from one another. You know, we try to, and we always write, we have, we basically use Google calendar and just uh, write what we want to do for the day. And then everybody can look and see and adjust to one another. So that, that sounds like it's working pretty well. I mean, it sounds almost normal, except for the having to keep your distance and wear a mask. It sounds almost normal for, for almost, research. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, usually the lab's a lot busier, but it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we're only allowing three people in at a time. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it is, it's much more normal than staying at home. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so other than just having fewer people around is a, is a typical day in the lab, you come in, you, you, check your experiments and do a lot of, of pipetting? Like what, what does a day in the lab look like for you? <laughs> well, and that is one thing that's different is I don't sit, um, I am, I do most of my work at home as far as preparing mm -hmm. all the preparations at home. I have a communal office and it's like, I've not been in my communal office since, you know, <laughs> March. Uh, so, um, so I do all my planning at home 
Um, and then I just have a list of things that I want to do for the day. So, you know, including, you know, housekeeping things and, you know, cleaning glassware, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I, uh, go in, I just have, a, I've made a plan before I go in and I just start executing. That's pretty great. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's a, it's a fun day in the lab. I think when, when you can go in and, and have a plan and execute on it. Yeah. So, yeah. And, yeah. So, and I, and I'm there too, uh, uh, as, as the senior researcher, I'm, I'm there to help people problem solve and, and, uh, yeah, basically pull things apart that they're having troubles with. Uh huh. And put them all back together. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yes. Yes. Hopefully it never goes all the way back together, but we, we, we can at least get it maybe functional. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So how long have you been a postdoc? I have been a postdoc Oh my goodness, 2017. Wow. Yep, goes fast. I know. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. And um, gosh, I don't know whether to ask you whether to look ahead or look look back. Um, do you do you have a, a next step in mind from here, or uh, is it uh, still you know, so um, especially currently, you know, the world's kind of topsy turvy. Yeah. So, so yeah. So yeah, yep. I would say I I don't know. I'm uh, just kind of riding the wave. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, that's a good, you know, sounds like you're in a good place and making a good, good headway on experiments while you're there. So, so where were you before you were a postdoc? I, I was, I went to graduate school. So um, I went to graduate school in my forties mm -hmm. and I went to graduate school at Washington University in St. Louis. Um, and that's where we actually came across each other mm -hmm. as you were looking for somebody to fill in um, for, to help host a workshop in St. Louis. So, uh, and I guess you had contacted my advisor and so then he asked me, so, but that's where I was, was in, in St. Louis. And that's where, where I got my PhD in chemical engineering. Great. Wow. Not, not a lot of people have the, um, the fortitude to do that, uh, a little bit later in life. So <laughs> congrats. It was amazing. You no, know, you know, you can do it. The difference is I have to be a little more patient with myself. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like things don't come quite as easily as, you know, 20 plus years earlier, mm -hmm. uh, but I can still get there. Absolutely. I can... Absolutely. And there are so, things yeah. I wish I had learned earlier. Coding is one of them, right? I feel like yeah. if I tried to learn to code when I was younger, it would have been more natural. It takes a little longer, but we get there. Definitely. Yes, we, we get there. And, you know, people aren't stuck in, you know, if they're in their career and they want to make a career change, you know, yeah. yeah. Do you it. can do it. So, it. so were, was that you? Were you in one career and you wanted to change into yes, a yes. research career? So um, my college, to my first bachelor's degree um, when I was, you know, straight out of high school was mechanical engineering. And um, I went to work in manufacturing. And so then I, after, um, the world was a little different back then, but I, uh, I uh, when I had children, I switched to uh, basically doing some consulting type work and do, being really involved in a, um, professional society, uh, running multiple programs, et cetera, but also doing some consulting with that. And it was during that, it was like, hmm, you know, uh, I thought I wanted to go back to school. I hadn't intended to end up in the biology and th things. I uh, got back to just test the waters because it's like, I don't know if I can still do this. Um, and so I started taking uh, community college classes just to see chemistry, um, else did I take? It was an environmental science uh, class of some kind. It was probably a geography type class. Anyway, I took statistics and I was like, well, I can do this. So then I made sure that I was going to transfer to uh, the major university in town, University of Missouri, Kansas City, Kansas City's home. And uh, then I got my second bachelor's degree in environmental science. And that ties back to all the farming, you know, interested in how, um, all of the world works together and uh, the chemistry and the biology and the physics and how it all links. 
Um, I never liked biology uh, in high school. I, I hated biology. <laughs> I hated it. It was dissecting. It was nothing but dissecting. I was like, oh. So I had to take a biology class for environmental science, that degree. And it was like, ooh, this is kind of cool. I'm enjoying all, it was all the molecular stuff. And it was like, that was really interesting. And so, yeah. <laughs> I love that story. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think when we hide the best parts of biology behind sort of this big book you have to memorize and dissect a frog and that's going to make you a good scientist, I think we do such a disservice to it, right? Yeah. Science, yeah. It's, the life sciences has so much more inquiry and like uh, understanding that you can gather and questions to ask than all yeah, that. Yeah, it was just uh, the, the molecular level understanding things and how you basically have little factories in your cells and there, yeah, it was just, it was uh, all the little mechanics of it was just really interesting. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that's so, that's so great. So, so you alluded to it, but um, did you grow up on a farm? I, I did. Um, yeah. So I spent my elementary years uh, on a farm. And um, so yeah, I enjoyed it was it was kind of a casual farm. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was taught at a um, Central Missouri State University mm -hmm. at geography. Mm -hmm. And um, we lived on the farm and had cows and horses and chickens. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all of those life. things. So yeah. yes, uh, I have a natural affinity for caring about agriculture and, and the environment because you know especially living on a farm you know uh you have to be very circular you know all of our waste there was no trash pickup you know <laughs> <laughs> nobody came and took your trash away um so you had to be circular uh it had to get you know, it, it either the compost got plowed into the gardens. Um, I have to say that, you know, the old appliances actually were uh, filled uh, ditches where we had erosion problems. Um, that may be not the best thing, but, you know, it, it was all, you know. Better than sitting somewhere, you know, <laughs> not, not helping with erosion, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so all that thinking, that circular thinking about how waste streams just don't disappear that you need to turn them around and, and make them a asset in some way yeah. is probably, yeah. that's where that came from. In me. Well, then it makes it sound like totally expected that you're doing exactly what you're doing right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the way that, that looks like, it's like, of course, this is what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Nitrogen fixation. <laughs> Well, and, and the cool thing is um, this bacterium where we started with it was because it's uh, very good at breaking down. So plants have um, the sugars inside, but it also on the outside that gives it structure, it's called lignin. And it's uh, very hard for most organisms to break it down. And this bacterium actually is one of them that does some pretty special chemistry. Uh, and so that's where we started. And that it was like, no, it's more than just that that's interesting about this yeah, bacteria. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So um, it, it sort of makes you um, exactly the right person to be leading our biobuilder workshops because the idea that cells are these great chemists and we just have to harness their their wisdom, their, their talent at doing this um, to deploy it in ways that is really useful um, yeah. is just fundamental to, to the teaching of these workshops that we run. So yeah, um, no, it's, it's, it's exactly what it is. We just have to understand and untangle the secrets of what's going inside enough that we can then uh, apply rules like, you know, as engineers do, we develop the rules and then we can follow the rules and use them and get something that's repeatable and understandable. And yeah. 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 Gosh, spoken like a synthetic biologist. That's so great. <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing. But now, um, did you have people who encouraged you on this path to, to this kind of a career? Um, anybody stand out along the way as, as a important mentor or somebody that gave you the just right piece of advice at just the right, just right time? I have to say no. Um, uh, I would say that I would encourage anybody that starts to always be curious, always, always to ask why, always to poke, uh, you know, uh, and, and if that, you have that desire just to follow it and see yeah. where it goes. Yeah. 
That's so, so great. It's, it, it is, um, a rare person that has that self-motivation and that ability to sustain that curiosity, but it is um, very clear that you are that person. <laughs> you know what though? I think it's in everybody. And if you, you just want to, um, if anything, I just want to encourage people to, to explore, mm-hmm. you know, um, that by being curious, the world is a very interesting place. Yeah. And, and so, you know, just, just, so give them a nudge. I wouldn't say that I didn't have anybody. Well, I can't say that. Um, <laughs> um, and anybody didn't discourage me, but I, I would say that people were, I had teachers that were always uh, affirming. Mm-hmm. So, right. But nobody right. Um, really suggested a direction. It was just, you know, I just, and that's maybe why I ended up here later. <laughs> mm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it, it, we all follow, you know, these maybe unexpectedly circuitous paths to getting to the careers that, that we sort of land in and find, find our, our best use of our, our energy in, um, mm-hmm. it seems like you are in an amazing, uh, spot right now doing just great work and, Staying curious, right? Yeah, yeah. just just keep yeah. poking. Yeah. <laughs> well, I so hope that your project goes well. It would be wonderful to have more nitrogen fixing cells to do to deploy in in agriculture and uh, do do good for the planet. Yeah, no. The ultimate goal is if you can understand how that relationship works. Um, because it's very similar to relationship all, uh, not all, lots of agricultural plants have relationships with fungi Mm -hmm. and it uses the same signaling pathway. They talk to each other, Mm -hmm. very similar to the bacteria. So the whole idea is if we can understand it, maybe we can hijack that in like rice or wheat or uh, things that aren't legumes, the plants that have the bacteria in the roots. Yeah. So. Well, I think it's inspiring. I can see a whole lot of BioBuilder projects coming from that very idea. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Let's talk. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. Cheryl, thank you so much. It's great to talk to you. Oh, it's, it's been very nice. And it's very nice meeting you in person. <laughs> yes, it, as such, right? <laughs> and then someday it's in real be- person. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah.